Well, everyone, it is about 100 degrees out here. Getting a late start. Got the Himalayan loaded up, ready to roll. And we are going camping for a few days. And actually, this will be the last video we get to call it the Himalayan. Because this bike's been pretty good. Good enough now that it's developed some personality and trust, trustfulness and trustworthiness. And it's just become my buddy. So I'm going to give it a name in the next, well, not the next video because it's kind of a, going to be a camping series. But in the next video after camping, we're going to christen this thing and put a name on it. i got some decals coming. Should be pretty slick. So I'm going camping for four days up over the mountains. You probably can't see them because that tree's in the way. Back there over that. And we might have some company coming this time. And I left my riding gloves in the pannier. And I can't get them back out. But I packed everything on top of them. So I have to wear some mechanics gloves till we get to the campsite. Yeah, it is a scorcher. I wanted to get an earlier start, but my wife wanted me to wait till she could come home for lunch and tell me goodbye. This is going to be, you see how much room I have to sit? I've got a big backpack full of camera gear on, so I'm going to have to sit way up on the tank while I ride. This is going to be an adventure. I guess that's why they call them adventure bikes. Ugh. Getting this thing off the center stand might be another adventure. All right, I don't have a lot of room. Yeah, this sucks. Yeah, this ain't the greatest riding position. But here we go. So we are leaving town and heading into the hills. This will be the last view of the mountains you get. We'll be in there shortly. We're going to a campsite that I wasn't planning on going to. So I don't know how well this is going to work out. Because my plan was to go to a different campsite that I had picked out. Because there, what I wanted to do was bring no food, no water. I wanted to be self-sustaining the whole time I was out here. I wanted to fish and... Uh, I've got a, craw a crawfish trap that I picked up. I wanted to fish and use my crawfish trap, then gather, you know, berries and things like that. Maybe catch a snake or something. But I did kind of a recon trip to make sure everything was in place down there uh, with some, with another guy who's coming out on this trip Yellow Road Bird and the gates were closed to get down there it's closed off so I couldn't can't use that campsite which pretty much spoiled my entire trip so I picked another site it's not going to be as good I can't do the fishing and all that down there I will do some fishing, but it'll be, I'll have to leave the campsite, travel about five miles, fish, and get back, because I don't want to leave the campsite unsecured. There's going to be a small stream where I'm camped at, that I might be able to use the crawfish trap in there, but I don't think it's big enough to support you know, good-sized fish, so I'm going to have to go to another river to fish. I don't even know if I'll be able to film that because I'm going to be in a hurry. I've got to get in there, fish, catch what I can, get out. Because I'm going to be leaving my campsite unsecured with just thousands of dollars worth of equipment in there. And I don't want to do that for very long. So it's going to be a risky maneuver to fish and get back. Yeah, this is an awkward riding position. Especially with all this weight on here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this if I point it out. There's a stream right here. I'm at the very top of the mountain. I can't turn around because I'm on a steep incline starting my descent. 
but the spring is right back there that starts this creek and this is going to go all the way down to my campsite and you'll see how much bigger it is by the time it gets down there so it's like crystal clear fresh water i don't even have to filter this stuff it's all just right straight out of the ground so got a long descent to go here and i'm gonna have to tippy toe down this thing I'm kind of tired uh, from the ride. I'm not exhausted from the ride itself. It's just my awkward riding position with all this gear on. The weight really isn't a problem. It's just I'm sitting so far forward up on the tank that I am not comfortable at all. So I'm kind of like supporting myself with my arms and stuff. It's been a long, slow ride. And this is actually going to be the slowest part of it because I got to modulate my speed because you won't be able to see through the shade and everything but there are rocky rough patches here that I'm going to have to creep through like this one I said it doesn't look like anything but you don't want to hit that at any speed carrying a big load of weight Also, while I was down here doing my little recon, me and the other guy, who'll be, he's going to come out and join us Friday. So he'll be out here in a couple of days, spend the night. While we were down here, we saw the biggest black bear I've ever seen out here. This thing was massive. It was probably, it was on all fours running from us as soon as it saw us. It took off running. But on all fours, it was like waist high to me. And I'm a six foot tall dude. So on its back legs, this thing was a bit more than six feet tall. It was bigger than me. I've seen some big brown bears and grizzlies and things, but not here. This, this is the biggest thing I've actually seen out here in these woods. Now, I'm going right here. There will be plenty of room for everybody here. I'm just going to park right here. We made it. And we got a little bit of firewood. All right, let's see if I can get off this bike. Uh. Well, all right, I have made it out to the campsite. I'm having to go renegade with my phone because my tripods are still in the panniers. So I'm going to have to unload everything to get them out before I can even start setting up cameras. So you won't get to see... Uh, the unloading and setting up the tent and everything but we'll take a little look around so we got got a spot here for a tent and then over on the other side of them rocks where i turned around i came down and checked that spot out first then came over here so we've got a spot for a tent there one up there one here one here and then one right there on the other side of those rocks i think i'm going to set up over there I get the pick of the litter, I guess, since I'm here first. So I get first pick, the first dibs on the campsite. Looks like one of my foot pegs is bent on the, on the hemi. Not at the lever, but like the peg itself. I'm gonna have to look into that. All right, let's get busy. I wanna get out of these clothes, it is hot, but I gotta unpack everything before I can do that. So let me get set up and I'll see you in a second. Hey everybody, welcome to camp. Finally got everything unpacked and I've changed clothes and cooled off a little bit. We're going tropical this time. Got my Hawaiian shirt on, good to go. Uh, right next to a creek, that's nice, I can get cool water. And I've already been in there splashing on myself, cooling off. I'll have to check the bike and see what it says the temperature is now. It was almost 100 when we left town Fahrenheit. Uh, it just feels good to be out of the riding gear, everything like that. So I've got a few things to do. Um, I've already got a bag of water. I got to start filtering that. Uh, got a head start on firewood. There was some already here, so uh, I'll have to get a little more, but not too much. I forgot my tin foil. I 
I've got a crawfish trap that I'm going to put in there. And hopefully I'll catch something. We can eat those. Try to get that rolling. What else? i got to go fishing. i got to go see if I can catch some fish. This is too small to really fish in. There might be something in there, but who knows. Uh, so what I'm going to do is i got to ride about five miles to a stocked trout creek or a stream over uh, five miles back that way try to catch what I can clean it there because I, I don't want to clean it here because of the bear situation so I have to clean the fish there bring it back and fry it in a pan the pan's kind of small hopefully it'll all fit in there maybe I can put it on a stick over the fire who knows uh, oh my fishing rod you guys didn't get to see the new one I took an old uh, this little messenger bag and made a fishing kit out of it so I'll wear that. Fishing rod is from M Rod. It's just a little collapsible thing. If, and I didn't know what to buy when I was getting it. Uh, I had no experience with these. Nobody I knew had experience with these. If I'd have known then what I know now, I'd have bought a shorter one. This is the Outback model. If you're buying it for motorcycle camping and fishing, buy the shorter one. You don't need all this extra handle. So I've got it hooked to a underspin Zedco 33 reel. And we'll Go ahead and take her apart and put it together. And then tangle the line. So two pieces go together like this. Slip it in, press inwards and twist. And collapsible fishing rod reel. There she goes. It's a nice little underspin rod. I didn't want to get an open face reel because I didn't want this in the pannier, you know, things hitting it or anything like that. So I went with an enclosed one. What do they call this? A spin spin cast reel or something like that. So it's just a trigger operated spin cast reel. So hopefully we can use this and catch a few things and have some dinner. Pretty slick. I'm also going to set up. I'm going to set up a tripwire around this with a noise alarm because like I said with the bear I saw that big ass bear not too far downstream from here uh, so if he comes creeping in hopefully that noise will scare him off I've got a couple of different ones one's an electronic noise maker I just made like a little tripwire kit and get the stuff out. Start dropping everything. This is just a little personal alarm that you buy off Amazon or wherever. And if you separate the two pieces, it makes a loud noise. So I'm gonna trip, I'm gonna rig this up with a trip wire so if anybody trips it, it yanks it apart and it goes off. The other one I got, this little device, here and basically all this is is a shotgun breach is what it is actually and so you load up a 12 gauge blank shot shell and this is like a flashbang it'll go off you set it in there rig it up pull this out if, if the trip wire pulls this out this will the firing pin will release and set off the blank so it should create a loud a large flash and a loud bang uh, it's about 175 decibels. Um, just by way of comparison, a, a pistol shoots at about 140 to 160. So it's slightly louder than a handgun going off out here. So hopefully that'll be loud enough to scare off anything. And the flash might do it too. I also picked up a solar light that is motion sensitive. But I don't think it survived the trip out here. I think it was pretty cheapy. I don't think it survived the ride. Uh, it's not working. So I've got it sitting over in the sun, if the sun comes back out, hopefully I can get some charge to it and hopefully it works. So I am going to do some maintenance around camp, get everything finished setting up, and I'm going to run and go fishing and hopefully by the time I get back we can cook some dinner. So I'll see you in a little bit. Alright, so I've made it back from the trout stream. Like I said, it's about five miles from here and they stock it every year. And it just opened up the end of last month. 
So it's only been open for a month for fish in it. And I got two trout with bugs all over them. Two good sized ones this time. Uh, got that little one last time. Caught two bigger ones this time. But I forgot to bring my foil. I went through all my stuff in there. There's no aluminum foil. I left it at home. So I can't cook them by the fire, so I'm gonna have to cook them on my stove in my frying pan. But my pan's too small. I can't win. I catch a little bitty fish at the other place. I catch fish that's too big for my frying pan here. So I'm gonna have to cut these into smaller, smaller pieces to cook them up. So we got some butter and some slap your mama Cajun seasoning. Let's cut these up, fry them, and get to eating. I, get, I did get one crawdad in my trap. <laughs> a little bitty one about that big. But I'm not planning on catching a bunch right away. I need to let, let that accumulate over time. So hopefully by tomorrow night, uh, Jeremy's supposed to come out. And hopefully I've got enough to cook up a little boil once he gets it. He's never had them before. I, I love crawdads. So let's get to cooking and get to eating. Fish is bumping. Well, dinner's over and I am stuffed. Yeah, two fish was about enough for me. So I don't know if I'll fish again tomorrow. I think because Jeremy's coming out and bringing some shrimp and things and I've got some crawfish going in my trap I've got one in there for sure because I checked it a minute ago but then I see it I can see another one climbing around on the outside but I can't see in it to tell if I've got any more inside or not yet so I'm gonna let it I'm just gonna let it sit and hopefully catch quite a few of them in there oh feels good to be off work I've been on mandatory overtime so I've just been working my butt off and that's why I haven't been making as many videos lately I just don't have time. Well, the last time I was camping, I had a little bit of trouble out of my chair. This is the Helinox Chair 1. I had trouble with the feet sinking into the ground. So I purchased these little balls from the company that slip onto the base of the feet. So if you're in softer soil, they don't sink down. Uh, they work well. It just kind of makes the stuff sack a little bit crowded when you go to fold it back up. And they're not cheap. It's about $30 for a set of those. So, yeah, kind of expensive. Kind of bummed. I bought this little light off Amazon. It's like a chip clip light. You can just clip onto things. It's got a solar panel on the other side and a motion sensor. I was like, wow, that'd be great. And you clip it to a tree branch. If you walk underneath it, it comes on. Awesome. I get up to take a leak in the middle of the night, I got a light. If something comes into my perimeter, I got a light. Except it didn't survive the trip out here. It worked at the house, but it don't work out here. So I guess the ride was a little bit too much for it. It was cheap anyway. Piece of crap. if you can see it or not, but I have a trip wire here. And there is the flashbang device rigged up and live. It is ready to roll. So if anything comes down this trail, we should get a bang. If anything comes around this way, we should get an alarm. So hopefully nothing trips it, either one of them. And we have a nice peaceful evening. Well, I had a little bit of a snafu getting the bear bag hung. Somehow the lion holding the bag came out of the D-ring. The bag dropped all the way to the ground. Leaving my line and my, uh, my D-ring up in the tree. So how do I get that down? It's just wrapped around a tree branch. So I sat there and thought about it for a second. I wiggled the line enough to get a little bit of a space in the, in the loop around the branch. 
So I got the D-ring to come down just a little bit, and that's as far as I can get it to go. Um, I've got a spare line, but it's what's holding my crawfish trap. But then still, my D-ring's up in the tree. So what I did was, I tied the rock bag to the other end of the line, and sat there and threw it until I got it through that little hole in the, the little loop in the line and, and down and I was able to pull it down that way. It took me about three tries to get it through there. He said that was a small target of way up in a tree. But I got it. Didn't have to untie my crab pot and rehang it. Things don't always go according to plan. So I got a little bit of a blooper to show you. Hope you guys enjoy that. Well, how about if every time I go camping, I tell an army story? So I know a lot of people want to hear Uncle Voodoo's army stories come back. Uncle Voodoo's army stories was a series of videos I did almost a decade ago. It's been a long time. And I said that, that shows how long some of these people have been subscribed to me. They're still asking for more of those videos. Uh, so maybe I'll tell one every time I go camping. How about that? We'll make a compromise because I got the name Uncle Voodoo. Voodoo was my call sign and nickname while I was in the army. And then the uncle part came around because of the army stories. People were asking me to tell stories about when I was in the army. And I, I, like I said, it's, it's something I don't really talk about much. So I agreed to tell stories <clears throat> that were uh, that had to do with like training and like funny things that would happen. I wasn't going to tell like war stories or anything like that. So I made the comment on the very first one because that was at that time I had only planned to do that one. I was just going to tell one story and that was it. Because I and I said I don't want this to become you know the Uncle Voodoo's Army Stories channel. And as soon as I said that the name Uncle Voodoo, people started calling me Uncle Voodoo and uh, they were wanting the army story. They're like, we want Uncle Voodoo's army stories. And so that's how the name Uncle Voodoo came about. <clears throat> and it just stuck. So that, that's how that happened. The name Voodoo, uh, I got that. Uh, I was a new private, just got out of basic. You know, I'm E1, I no rank on my collar. I was bottom of the barrel and when I got out of basic and got to Fort Drum, where I was stationed at, with the 10th Mountain Division, we had a sergeant who would harass the guys if a bunch of us went out to the smoking area to smoke a cigarette. Um, because, like, smoking indoors was becoming a thing. You know, before that, you'd smoke anywhere you wanted. And so it was becoming a thing where you couldn't smoke indoors and things like that anymore. So the Army made, like, little landscaping timber boxes that you know filled with gravel and you had to go stand in this box and that was the designated smoking area so we were kind of a captive audience in this little box and it wasn't, it wasn't like a box it was just a perimeter on the ground you know some gravel in it, you know nice and tidy but that you had to stand in there if you were smoking and so we had this one sergeant and he was uh, really religious um, to a fanatical extent. Uh, you know, evangelical Christian, but uh, to the nth degree. He's one of them people that believe demons really exist and they're out here, you know, hiding behind trees and stuff. You know, one of those guys. And so we'd be out there smoking and he would come out there and put us all at the position of parade rest so we couldn't move, couldn't talk. You know, and all we could do was stand there and listen to what he had to say. And he would preach to us about how we're going to hell because we're smoking and ruining our bodies. And our body is a temple of the Lord and all this. And it was just, it just sucked. There's nothing we could do about it. You know, he outranks us. He's a non-commissioned officer. We're a bunch of privates. And like I said, he would do this all the time. And it was just got on my nerves bad. And... I was in my room one night, polishing my boots, and I was eating dinner and watching TV. And I was eating Hot Wings. And I was watching this show on TV. I can't remember the name of the movie. I'll ha I'd have to look it up and I'll annotate it in here somewhere. 
but it starred these two bodybuilders who were kind of like B-movie uh, actors in the 80s. They were twins, and they were called the Barbarian Brothers. And they were semi-truck drivers in this movie. That's about all I can remember about it. But they had this, like, voodoo chicken bone in the glove box. So every time they would, like, get into a hairy situation or something, they would get this chicken bone out of the glove box and start chanting, you know, chicken bone, chicken bone, lucky, lucky, chicken bone. Chicken bone, chicken bone, lucky, lucky, chicken, chicken bone. To try to get them through whatever peril they were facing. And so I'm eating, eating hot wings, so I've got a chicken bone in my hand. I'm watching this, and I'm, like, looking at my boot laces. And pretty soon it dawned on me. You can't wear jewelry in the army, like necklaces and things, but you could wear a chain, a single chain with a religious symbol on it, a cross, Star of David, whatever your religion was. And my dog tags, you know, I had no religious preference, and I'm not religious, and I just had no religious preference on my dog tags. And so I was thinking about it. I was like, I could take leather boot lace, clean up one of these chicken bones, tie it to the boot lace, wear it as a religious symbol, and change my religion from no religious preference to voodoo, and that's my religious symbol. So the next time this sergeant came down, I went to the uh, little uh, army surplus store off base and had to make me a new set of dog tags that said voodoo was my religion. So I actually had the official dog tags with voodoo on them, ready to go, and my chicken bone. And so the next time he came out and started uh, haranguing us about smoking, you know, I started chanting at him and you know, shaking my chicken bone, and you know, he was like taken back, you know, it, it was, you know, it kind of freaked him out. Um, and so I, I was kind of like chasing him around with this chicken bone, you know, chanting, <laughs> chanting at him with, you know, voodoo. And so he ended up leaving. And everybody thought it was funny. They got the joke. They knew what I was going to do. And uh, he went and tried to turn me in for, I don't want to say insubordination, but it was like, it wasn't assaulting an NCO, but it was like disrespect to an NCO or something like that. Because I... I chased him out of there with the chicken bone. And so I got called into the commander's office to, you know, because he wanted to hear what, you know, I had to say for myself. And so he asked me what was going on. So I told him the whole story. And I told him, you know, voodoo is my religion. And he's out there, you know, putting his Jesus curse on me. And I had to, you know, protect myself with my chicken bone. And, you know, and played it straight, you know, as if I was really, a, you know, a uh, subscriber to voodoo. And, you know, this was, this was my talisman, you know. I had to defend myself, you know, to ward off his evil curse, Jesus curse that he was putting on me. And the commander was like, well, you're right. I mean, he can't be infringing upon your religious freedoms. And so they called him in, told him to leave us alone, <laughs> and, you know, because we weren't of his religion. So he had no business preaching at us and, you know, haranguing us about this stuff. And so he was told to leave us alone, and that was the end of the story. Nothing, it never happened again. But I got tagged with the nickname Voodoo. So instead of Project Private whatever, I was, hey, Voodoo, come here. And you know, pretty soon that became my call sign on the radio. Uh, then once I became an NCO and had my own group, you know, I was Voodoo 6 was my call sign. Voodoo was the squad. You know, and so then when I got out of the Army, uh, the Internet was becoming a thing. And you had to have usernames and passwords for every, every site you signed up for. So I just ended up using Voodoo as, you know, my username, and it's just stuck ever since. And so then after making some YouTube videos and talking about the Army Story thing and making the um, Uncle Voodoo comment just off the, off the cuff, I wasn't planning on that going anywhere. I just said it. It just stuck, and so that's how I became Uncle Voodoo. So there it is, your Uncle Voodoo's Army Story for this camping trip. Like I said, I'll tell one every, every camping, trip. We'll, camping trip. We'll go back through them all and talk about the good old days I guess even though I, I try not to live in the past I, you know, I try to focus forwards but figure if I'm sitting out here with nothing better to do I'll talk to the camera and I'll tell you guys an army story before I go to bed let's set off this flashbang and see how loud it really is so I've got it set up let's test it and find out I'm just gonna grab the wire and I'm gonna pull it let's see how loud this sucker is Okay, my ears are ringing. If I was walking through here in the middle of the night and that went off, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably shit myself. But yeah, that worked. <laughs> Let's reload it. Set it back up.
All right, well, it's getting good and dark now. I've got a little lantern going up here in this tree. But my motion sensor light started working all of a sudden. I don't know why. Maybe the it was maybe it was too bright out for it. I don't know. So we're going to walk towards it, and you'll see it come on. It'll come on and stay on for 30 seconds, and then shut itself back down. So that's pretty cool. So if anything approaches my campsite from this direction even before I get to the trip wire it's been coming on there it goes so I'm yeah I'm right at the trip wire so pretty cool my light works my 18 bucks so yeah I'm kind of happy that that started working that's that's kind of handy to have so hopefully it stays working Said it, it just started working all of a sudden. I don't know. Thunder might get some rain. Guess we'll check out the tent's uh, waterproof ability when that happens. All right, catch you later. See you guys in the morning.